So here we are at game five of the store champs at Play to Tech in Malmo. And we've got uh, Bouguet versus Casper. And uh, I'm Michael Dennis from the 186 Squadron. And I'm uh, here with Alex Burt, who's also from the 186 Squadron. Hello, Alex. Hello, thank you for having me. My pleasure. So we've got some Imperials versus some Rebels here. It's very exciting to see Echo on the table again. Especially against so many ships. I think this could be her time to shine. Well, it looks like they've deployed already. And um, yeah, this is certainly a target rich environment for Echo to make the most of. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how the Lone Wolf performs, especially considering she's going to be shooting after everything. Uh, and I'm already excited to see how the Stress Hog performs um, against Echo as well. Like, will he be able to get a shot on her? Yep, Casper will have to work to get Echo in arc there. There's very nice empty space in the middle of the board, which I wonder if he'll exploit that at all. Well, it looks like um, Bouguet has certainly deployed to make sure he gets the most out of Lone Wolf there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, this lonely Z95 at the back there as well who just doesn't fit in with the six ship formation, <laughs> so he's going to have to turn in and bring up the rear. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, how people used to place Howl Runner back in the days of the seven TIE Swarm. Yeah, that's right. Well, we used to have this uh, deployment so that when we set up the six ships, they'd actually be, uh, they'd move out into a column so that they could move down the side of the board. And when they turned in, they'd be in... Um, sort of uh you know two or there'd be three ships side by side yeah but um of course the problem that that opening had was that every time it would telegraph your opening maneuver which would be to move the ships forward to slot those other ships in at the back yeah well it looks like the decimator is about to joust the z swarm but this could be interesting So he runs the risk of burning down the decimator really, really quickly, but then getting ripped apart by Echo in the uh, late game if he doesn't tackle her really quickly. Oh, this should be a good one. Agreed. The uh, Well, it looks like he's parked a Z just slightly out front there to prevent uh, Oiken from bumping into the entire front of the swarm and neutralizing too many shots. Yeah, smart. So these are all the bandits, so they're all pilot skill too. And as the tallers are the no, the tallers are obviously the ones that haven't moved yet. Yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> so I guess the Imperial player has initiative. Yes. It'd be interesting to see how many points they're on without having to figure it out. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, s I'm gonna s I'm gonna check uh, check that real quick. But while I'm checking it, um, I was just gonna uh, I was just gonna say that uh, the Mara Jade there, if he can leverage Mara Jade and get behind those Zeds, that's gonna be pretty uh, pretty strong. Cause he yeah. Can from K turning. I'm wondering if he's gonna. Um, sort of faint against the decimator and then turn into the middle uh, try and get the stress on Echo and then burn her down with the remaining Z's before uh, he loses too many of them so do you think he can take the decimator off the board here uh, so that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 potentially he could do 16 damage maximum there Well, that would be, uh, but he's at range three with a lot of those shots. That's true. And is the is the the back one isn't even in range? I don't think. Right, and that's not counting the, or that's counting all the shots from the stress hog as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So assuming everything hits, but then it looks like the back Z isn't in range anyway. So you've got at least one more turn. Mm -hmm. 
Taking a couple of shields there. Yep, here we go. The stress hog coming into play here. Prevent Oiken from taking actions. Yeah, those uh, multiple twin laser and primary weapon shots really do add up against zero agility. Yeah, it's one damage already. Was that a crit already? Wow. So this is uh, Casper Scharling, and his list is 100 points. And uh, Buge Blutzhoft, and I'm going to keep apologizing for my Swedish accent while I'm doing these uh, these commentaries because it just, I'm sure it's just not the musical accent that the Swedes usually have. But uh, this is 100 points as well, so they would have had to roll off for initiative. That makes sense then. Yeah, I don't know why he chose to. Well, he has an engine upgrade, so maybe it's better to go first. Well, it does mean that if he gets in front of someone, he can guarantee the uh, the bump before they move out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Is he leveraging his one his one bonus range dice there? Well, he's already taken all six or seven hits. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, and Echo hasn't even managed to come into range yet. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the Casper uh, there could get a really good block on Oiken and then take him off next turn and then focus the rest of his efforts on Echo. Yeah, most of those ships will be moving before Oiken, so. He's got the, the opportunity to to block basically everything. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he does with Echo here, if he's going to gamble on the flank or if he's going to disengage and come round. Do you think that the, uh, the Decimator is going to try a hard three to the left and would it put it on that asteroid? It I was just would, one, it? Yeah, I think it probably would end up on the rock. A three bank might be right, depending on what he does with the next ship. Yeah, he's definitely going in for the, for the finisher and the Decimator there. So do you think that Zed at the back there will uh, move to the right to try and block uh, the decimeter coming into the middle of the board? Nope, nope. no it didn't. Just banking on that block paying off. Yeah, but then... The Y-Wing clears stress with one of its only two greed maneuvers. <laughs> Now he's moving the towers here as well, but uh, he's realized that Oiken should have moved. Ah, uh, yes, going for the blunt block. block. <coughs> Can't help but think that Oiken's probably not long for this world now. I'm inclined to agree. Can you take a damage for that tower that bumped? I suppose he hasn't got his cars lined up, but we can see them. Can he take off Z this turn? C he could get lucky. No, nope, there's a uh, oh, lone wolf. <laughs> Reroll that blank. Oh no! It's still blank. Oh, Palpatine. Palpatine and is that a focus? Uh, oh, uh, Callus, I guess. I imagine he's used Callus on the Stress Hog. That would make sense, yeah. He probably spent his focus token there, didn't he? Yeah, the token's gone. He's not going to get shot, so he might as well. Did 
Did he kill a Z? Uh, oh, doesn't look like it. No. Oh dear. He's using his dials to mark the ones he shot. Oh, that's quite clever. I'd never considered doing that. So, can we see how much damage there's on the on Oik in there? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Is that the 12th damage now? No, not quite. Must be on 9 then. 9 or 10. Looks like that's it. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, from the crit as well. Oh dear. It's Echo versus the world. Echo can still do this, definitely. Especially without having the bower rolls. Like, if this was Whisper against, like, all TIE Fighters, then it might go the other way. But even then, um, I've seen her solo a TIE Swarm before as well. Well, it was not only doable, but very easy to do before the phantom nerf. Now it's a lot harder to do, but still very possible. Yeah, absolutely. He's really just got to stay out of the arc of that uh, Y wing. Yeah. I'm assuming everyone's going to do the turns. Y wing. Yeah, if Echo's done uh, like a, a long move, then she should be okay to dodge the arc of the uh, Y wing there. Bugay's got the intimidation factor there. You can see he's wearing his Star Wars medal. Uh -huh. Very sharply dressed with his suit on as well. Got the suspense of what Echo's done is killing me. I want to see. If they, I hope it's not that hard one. If it is the hard one, then it's going to be hard to come back from. But Echo hasn't taken a shot yet, so. Oh. Y Wing is repositioned. Ah, oh, it is the long move. Excellent. Was it K turn? Oh, was it? Wow. Is it? It is. It is. Case wow. Turn. I did not see that one coming. Wow. And no shot. Sensor jammer. Spins the focus. Lone wolf. Oh. Looks like two of eights. This is nail biting. It really what is, is Echo going to do now? Because the Phantom's greens are so limited. It's got the two banks, two and three forward. I mean, do you think you bank two bank <coughs> to the left and just try to block some ships and get a range one? Possibly, but then that really opens you up. I mean, I don't see how stressed by the Y wing. That's true. Maybe this. I think probably the three forward would be the safest move in this position. Um, Do you think so? Yeah. Then you could potentially barrel roll to make sure you don't get shot, um, or yeah. just recloak to be in a better position for the following turn, um, and then you can pull some shenanigans to get behind the wall. Based on where the Y wing's gone, it looks like the three forward power might be the safest option. 
I agree. He's uh, Casper's turning all the ships towards Echo, so hopefully. Yeah, he's really counting on that two back uh, block, isn't he? Yeah. And this is uh, this is just one of those those moments where you know it's really really all comes down to which maneuver have you chosen? Oh, absolutely. This could really make or break this game. I mean, we've seen that a lot recently in our Jump Masters versus Imperial Aces, haven't we? Where yes. you've got the positioning on the Jump Master to block one of Suntir's moves. And had, the question is, did he hard turn or did he, um, you know, make a long move? Yeah. Oh, he's... Oh, no, that's the Z turning. I was like, surely Echo hasn't turned in that time. It's, Echo could have pulled some crazy white maneuver like the 4 forward just to be un unpredictable mm. but I mean I'm assuming he's got a plan with that K-turn I think I would have played it more conservatively if I'd had Echo here yeah. there it is 3 forward you called it I would have probably gone 4 forward instead of the 4K, mm. and just recloaked. Um, because Echo can sort of circle the swarm so efficiently uh, while they sort of try to turn around and yeah. wind up doing a bunch of K-turns, and then there's just... There's, there's that barrel. barrel. Have you seen this before, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. This is the first time I'm watching it. <laughs> so, yeah... That's probably quite a good call now because it's going to be really hard for the swarm to turn back into Echo. Um, so I think there's, I think there's at least three shots there on her though. That's true. That's true. But you know, two dice sent to Jammer. Mm. But they've all got focus tokens. It's the Lone Wolf. That's true. No, one shield down. Oh, this is pretty tense. Could all be over any minute. Is that range one? I guess so. That must have been the front one then. <sighs> oh, the other shield. Oh no. <laughs> Don't tell me that's a crit. Oh, oh my crit. god. Oh, I can't watch. What crit was it? Oh, oh, Echo evades that one. Was that a structural damage? He's making him re-roll it because it was on the debris. Ah, uh, okay. L Lone Wolf. He rolled the evade. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, the Rebels haven't lost a ship, and Echo's on one hull. This is incredibly tense, Alex. It is really tense. Could this be the most incredible re comeback ever? Or is it all <laughs> going to be over any moment? Any time will tell. I really wish we knew what crit Echo had. Oh, yeah. I've been in this scenario as well, where you're thinking, okay, I've done this on my Phantom. And you're just watching what the other player's done and going, you know... Please, God, don't, don't let them <laughs> do the one thing I really hope they haven't done. And of course, with the old D-click rules, you could just you could just bug out and it wouldn't matter. Exactly. Well, you had a lot more control with the D-cloak. Sort of uh, a lot more um, possibility for getting away. Yeah. So what do we think? He's going to turn right with Echo and... Uh, disengage for a bit, try and get into a better position for an attack back later. A hard one to the left wouldn't be terrible, because the Rebels can't turn that tightly. Yeah, that's true. Um, if the hard one takes him out of arc of the uh, Y-Wing, that is. Because then he can also get a shot on that Z that's on its own and recloak that way. That's true. Well, he could do the bow roll, though, couldn't he? Yeah. If he's not blocked by those Zs. Looks like all the rebels are 
lining up on each other here. Because they're all just piling into the back of that. <laughs> <laughs> And then if he can hit, well, if he can hit Echo with the stress on, then that's pretty much game over. But yeah. if he doesn't manage to get the shots on Echo, then he can spread out and try and get her next to him. <gasps> oh, is that a bump? Oh, he's trying to fix his crit. It was a bump, right? Because he's not actioned? Well, no, if he was trying to fix his crit, it can't have been a bump. Oh, right, he must have had an action. Oh, wow. He didn't have... He must have bumped. Because now the Zed's a shooting. How is this possible? Uh, does he have um, a thrust, uh, the console fire? Uh, that must have been it, yes. Oh my god, the stress hog is on him. So Echo's but I think he's two stress and a thrust. But I think he's just sensor jammered all of those shots into nothing. Because they've got no focus tokens, right? So they're not getting... Oh, that's right, of those course. But so he's just sen sensor jammering all the damage away, but he's taking the double stress. So if Echo's double stress with a console fire, then conceivably he <laughs> could just die at the end of the next, at the beginning of the combat phase. Oh, this is too tense. Well, oh my god! <laughs> the only way, um, <laughs> the only way Echo um, would be rolling a die at the beginning of the combat phase with a crit is if it was a console fire, right? Right. Oh no. I can't handle watching Echo get quadruple stressed. That would just be too much. <laughs> but where does Echo go from here? Exactly. I mean, it's got to be the two bank, right? Three turn right a over the debris field. Right, and then run the risk of taking a crit and killing yourself. Well, you can and run the risk triple of the stress fire yourself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just take all the risks, right? <laughs> right it's time for big plays, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is big player clock. <laughs> I have to say, I am oh really for a point. Yeah, Sorry, I Casper. mean, you know, it's sort of. I find whenever I'm doing one of these commentaries, I lean towards the underdog. Yeah. And uh, it's certain. I mean, to be fair, I actually know how difficult it is to get shots on Echo with a. Um, four forward? Is with, that three? With the debris field? That is a four forward through the debris field. And, that, and that's it. Echo takes the crit. Echo takes the crit, and it's end of days. Yeah, must be end of days. Wow. Uh, all the risks. <sighs> wow. Well, I suppose that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, that's certainly consistent with some of my echo flying experience, definitely. I was going to say uh, there before uh, I sort of before we had to stop and hold our breath for that uh, debris roll, but um, you know I know how difficult it can, how slippery those phantoms can be for even when you've got six ships to point at them or seven ships to point at them, they can still just slip through your fingers and throw four dice at you and kill all your ships. Yeah, I tend to find when the phantoms across the board from me, they evade everything I throw at them. But when it's my phantom, it always dies. <laughs> well, that's because uh, we only remember the negative experiences. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you.